Hello, I'm Dr. Andrew Farley with today's episode of the Heartbeat of Faith podcast. This is a place to explore themes of the Bible, delve into the profound depths of Scripture, and tune in to the heart of God. My sincere hope is that as we progress through this series, we'll comprehend just how interconnected the Bible truly is. The goal of this series is to recognize the seamless weaving of these individual stories into an exquisite tapestry. Every epistle, anecdote, vision, and lyric is intertwined with one another, revealing an expansive biblical cosmos. Today, we continue to look at the character and attributes of Jesus. Who is he according to the story of Scripture? And how do we relate to him personally? If you've heard the Bible in a Year podcast or read the Gospel of John, you might have encountered this name for Jesus, Lamb of God. This title carries some serious weight. It was one of the first titles given to Jesus when he entered the public scene. John the Baptist points to him and calls him the Lamb of God. The people marveled at John's words. John's eloquence and bravery stirred the children of God. They began to mumble rumors of him being the promised Messiah. John paused for a long moment, and the people were silent as they waited for him to speak. John touched the water and let it fall out of his hands. I baptize you with water, John said calmly, but the one who comes after me will baptize you with the fire of the Holy Spirit. John's words were interrupted as he saw a man standing in the crowd. John's eyes widened and his lower lip began to quiver. The man stepped forward from the group of people standing on the shore. A few tears streamed down John's hairy face as he watched Jesus walk into the water. John could barely speak. His entire purpose in life was to prepare the way of God's chosen, and here he was standing before him. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, he whispered to himself. What is the significance of the title Lamb of God? If you were a Jew listening to John the Baptist that day by the water, you would have understood what he was saying. The Old Testament scriptures include foreshadowing and prophecies of a lamb being led to slaughter on behalf of humanity. The most notable example is in Exodus, when God is ready to deliver his people from slavery. God declared judgment on Pharaoh and the children of Egypt. Death was coming to every household that didn't have the blood of a lamb on its doorpost. The Lord ordered them to take the blood from the lamb and spread it on the doorposts of their homes. Then God said, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike all the firstborn. I will execute my righteous judgments, for I am the Lord. This blood on the doorpost will be a sign for you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall or destroy you. For God would use the blood of the Lamb as a symbol of favor, protection, and deliverance. A symbolic story that would echo into eternity. So Moses called the elders of Israel, and all of them made sure the people spread blood on their doorposts. They hid in their homes and worshipped God. Midnight came, silence filled the streets, and all the lights had dimmed. Egyptians slept soundly in their homes, while the Israelites remained awake, waiting for what would happen next. God descended on the land. Silently he wandered through the cities, passing by every home. The only sound that could be heard were the exhaling breaths of every firstborn. They breathed their last as God passed through. Life exited each and every home that was not protected by the blood of the Lamb. God, the defender of Israel, had passed over. Every firstborn that was not protected by the blood was destroyed. 
God passed over any household covered by the blood of a slain lamb. They were protected because the innocent life of another had been taken in their place. This is one of the Bible's many foreshadowings of Jesus' future sacrifice on the cross. But the first Passover in Exodus was not the first image we see in the Old Testament that foreshadowed Jesus' death taking away our sins. No, let's go all the way back to the beginning of our series when Adam and Eve sinned and God banished them from the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve's unity with God was fractured. Their knowledge of evil caused their hearts and their bodies to feel pain. Yet even in their disobedience, God's love for them remained and would always remain. He killed an animal and made clothes for them. An innocent life was taken so they could be warm and feel safe again. This would be an image used for the rest of history. God slaughtered an animal to cover the shame and nakedness caused by sin. This foreshadowed Jesus' sacrifice for you and me, which heals us of our spiritual nakedness and sin. Later on in Genesis, when Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son Isaac, God provided a ram to take his place. We have the fire and the wood, But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham could hardly bear the words coming from his mouth. Oh, my son, God will provide himself a lamb, I am sure of it. Anguish filled Abraham's heart and mind. He took ropes in his hands and bound them to his son. Tears streaming down his face, he laid Isaac down at the altar. Abraham, God's chosen hero, stood over his son, the supposed father of nations, poised to slay his only child, raised the blade high in the air, with his eyes looking toward heaven and faith welling up within his heart that God would make this right somehow. Abraham prepared the descent of his knife towards Isaac. In that instant, the heavens opened up violently, booming from the skies. A voice of deliverance bellowed across the mountaintops. Abraham! Abraham! The voice cried. Trembling on the floor with tears blurring his vision, Abraham managed a response. Here I am, he whimpered. Do not strike your child, God said. Your faith in me will be spoken of for all eternity, for not even your own son would keep you from worshiping me. Abraham finally lifted his eyes, and there in the thicket beside him was a ram caught by his horns. There he and Isaac sacrificed the ram to God on the altar, and they named the mountain the Lord will provide, for God is the one who would provide the ultimate sacrifice. The ram caught in the thicket took Isaac's place as a sacrifice, another thread in the great tapestry of God's story. The animal slaughtered for Adam and Eve, the ram caught in the thicket, and the Passover lamb all pointed toward the Lamb of God, who had come to take away the sins of humanity. God has been telling the world about Jesus' sacrifice since the very beginning, and he repeatedly reminded the people of Israel that the Messiah would be slaughtered for their forgiveness and reconciliation. Listen to the poetic prophecies of Isaiah about the promised Redeemer. Surely he has borne our sickness and carried our suffering. Yet we considered him plagued, struck by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought our peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Everyone has turned to his own way, and Yahweh has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, 
Yet when he was afflicted, he didn't open his mouth. As a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and as a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he didn't open his mouth. Isaiah 53, 4-7 The Holy Spirit also reminds us today that Jesus is our Lamb of God. Through Jesus Christ, God has taken away all of your sins, past, present, and future. Hebrews 10.14 says that by one sacrifice, you have been made perfect forever. No, you're not perfectly behaved, but you are perfectly forgiven for all time. Even your next sin is already forgiven because of Jesus. That's how much better his sacrifice was than the blood of bulls and goats in the Old Testament. Christ didn't merely cover your sins for a year at a time as Israel enjoyed because of the Day of Atonement. No, he took away your sins once and for all. This means that God keeps no record of your wrongs. He remembers your sins no more. So you're not a person who's being forgiven daily or progressively. You're a totally forgiven person, no matter what. Because of Jesus, the Lamb of God, the perfect and final sacrifice for sins. This is what Jesus meant on the cross when he said, It is finished. When heaven and earth meet in the final days, we will see Jesus as the perfect Lamb of God. John's vision recounted in Revelation reminds us that our total forgiveness and our new identity as children of God were only made possible through the Lamb of God. My tears ceased when I saw him. Behold, standing before me was him, the Lamb of God. He bore the scars of slaughter, still bloodied and bruised by the cruelty of man. He took the sealed scroll in his hand. All the elders and creatures erupted in praise, singing, Worthy are you to open its seals, for you were slain, and by your blood we are ransomed for God. Every tribe, language, and nation will know that you are God. Even more angels emerged, singing, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Honor, glory, and blessings. I watched as every living creature in heaven and on earth worshipped the bruised and crucified King. Its beauty was beyond words. Thank you for listening to today's episode of The Heartbeat of Faith. Follow the podcast so you can learn more about the Bible in this inspiring and entertaining way. Download the Pray.com app. And to be encouraged in God's grace, visit andrewfarley.org. That's andrewfarley.org. Does your money stretch as far as it used to? Most likely no. Here's why. It took 200 years for the U.S. to print its first $5 trillion. Today, Washington has done that in just three years. The problem? Every new dollar makes each of your dollars worth less. Our sponsor, Birch Gold Group, has helped tens of thousands of Americans protect their IRAs or 401ks from the dollar's loss in value with physical gold and silver. Now you can too. Get a free info kit on gold right now by texting the word Heartbeat to 989898. With an A-plus rating with the BBB, you're in good hands with Birch Gold. So get your no-cost, no-obligation info kit now by texting HEARTBEAT to the number 989898.